I've been scarred and I've been bruised. I have learned just what to do. I need to leave my past behind me. I need to look, look, look to the future. No matter what will come, no matter what I've done, I know just what to do. And that's all because of you. Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Guys, we are over 2,000 subscribers. What? That is so, so, so exciting. We, is it premiere or debut? I don't know the right terminology, but our first ever appearance. This is genuinely not what we had in mind. I think we completely underestimated how fast it would grow. We hadn't even sat down and decided how we're going to market, how we're going to advertise. And it's like you guys just took care of that for us. And I'm so, so, so grateful. And you are, you are so overt in how you express your belief in the channel, how you express your desire for the channel to grow. It's believable. It's warm. It's compassionate. It's kind. It gives me this confidence, you know, that when I sit in space and I'm like, have you met my subscribers? Like I can count on them. I'm starting to know you guys by name. Um, I've got my, my usual people. I know people are very different in expression and appreciation. Not all of them will be comfortable with the comment section engagement um, and all ways of showing affection are welcome but the ones that are visible in how they communicate i've started to be familiar with their names some people prefer to inbox me to dm me some people just advertise on their own platforms and because we share social media space i will see i genuinely genuinely appreciate it at best i try to always show you that i saw and i appreciate it if i miss it it was purely accidental uh we share social media space with um one of our subscribers her name is Nontemi um yeah she's gone she's gone through a tough thing from what i see uh, on her wall so big hug to her where is tingo um we just want to send a tingo hug to nondi we are thinking of you um i saw on your social media it's not mine to share uh, but it's on here public platform um and obviously that did something to my heart because she she's always she's always so overt in how she supports us and how she supports me i'm very very sorry um and if there's anything we can do um to make the injury better please do express it um privately and and we'll see um but we're holding you in prayer we're, we're holding you in thought and i hope i'm saying your last name correctly for the actual video we don't need tingo so bye tingo we are those people now that don't discuss um goisho <laughs> kidding we'll always be discussing um goisho but today is not that day uh today we've got something unique that has been in my spirit and how it is under discussed and that is when the good is unfamiliar you know, um, we are talking so much about how to get out of the pain and how to edge closer to healthier spaces, to better versions of ourselves. And we underestimate how frightening and how unfamiliar being healthy can be if you don't know what it looks like, how foreign it can feel and how lonely it can feel because you don't have the coping resources to be in that space because for majority of your life, you've been in dysfunction. Dysfunction is home. You know how to deal with it. And we underestimate how much we recreate dysfunction so that we can have familiarity and that's a very very important attribute to pay attention to if you're trying to heal that actually being healed is not a space you've ever been to so it doesn't feel like this rosy experience that you've got in mind that's got soothing vibes and a whole meditative feel that is not what it feels like it's actually very frightening to be good it's very frightening to be loved it's very frightening to not anticipate things falling apart. You're just sitting there thinking, when is the other shoe going to drop? Because you know how to deal with that. You know, we're so trained at preempting dysfunction, at responding to trauma and injury, at navigating our way when we are unloved, when we are unappreciated. Because for most people, that has been their upbringing, that has been the bullying experiences at school, the adolescent challenges they experience in their spaces, their workplace challenges. So most people know how to feel unworthy they know how to feel incompetent they know how to feel left behind they know how to feel different from the other that they know how to do and they they are happy with their demons because they keep them company they 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 know each one another's faces so when the shaming voices start to come saying you're so pathetic you're gonna fail again yeah they they kind of that's home for them and i want us to talk about 
tolerating how frightening it can feel to give yourself a chance at being healthy and normalizing that feeling when you're like, this healing didn't look like this in my mind. I thought it would feel good and make you understand that that's not how it feels in the beginning because you are thrown in a place that's got no street signs, no GPS, no familiar faces because you stepped into it alone. You decided to leave behind the people that hurt you, the things that hurt you. So essentially, you're not here with anything familiar. So the things that normally guide how to dodge, how to do this, how to do this aren't there. You are new here. And the biggest healing gift you can give to yourself is to think, I don't know my way around here, but I want to be here. And I'm going to stay here. And then I'm going to figure out where is left, where are the restaurants, where are the other people in this world, what is the activities of leisure in this new world. But take it as I'm untrained. I don't know my way around here. We sabotage good experiences because man, they're too scary to trust. It's scary to trust. It's scary to believe. It's scary to open yourself up to it because what if you're wrong? You would feel so humiliated, so dumb because life has taught you that ain't for you. <laughs> and it would be so embarrassing, so humiliating if you took the risk to believe it and it turned out you are wrong. But I'm saying you're worth the risk. Sit there in this good, healthy experience for you and trust that it's going to stay. Trust that it's going to stay. Stop waiting for enough time to pass until the good disappears, disappears because it always does. Sit there and think the wise thing is to bask in its glory today. I don't have a guarantee of how long it's staying, but I know it's here today. Be okay being competent at your job. I know you don't know how to be. Nobody has ever called you that. But yeah, that's you. That's what you've been working hard to do. Believe it. Don't let the other people remind you of where you're coming from. And don't listen to the voices that remind you where you've been and how many times you've failed and how many times. Celebrate it when you've gotten something right. That is you. You did that. Accept it when somebody loves you. Don't be out there calculating, yeah, but until when? And when you find out the real me, you're going to bounce. How about I show it quickly? So if you're going to leave, you're going to kick and leave soon. Don't do that. Don't do that. We don't do that. We are trying to nurse uncertainty of the fact that people can let us down and that we can fail and that maybe we won't get it right. But we are accurate in knowing, but today I'm getting it right. This is love. I've never felt it before, but I want, I want to feel more of it. And I don't want to anticipate threat. And trust yourself that if you've lived for how many ever years you've been alive through pain, you've got nothing to fear. Because if it turns out to be painful, <laughs> you're a trained soldier in the pain thing. So take your history of dealing with adversity as a protective layer of why you are ready to jump into the endless joy that's on the other side of vulnerability because should it be drowning i've swam in adversity i've done it so don't take your history to say i know a bad thing is going to happen take your history and say should a bad thing happen i'm anyway going to be fine so i'm not going to out here and train for the bad thing i'm trained i'm going to be here and try to navigate my way around the good rope people that are far better experienced than you you know, to hang around in this good, good space. When a beautiful thing happens to you and you don't trust yourself to keep it, it's wise to pair yourself up with good people that are used to good things so that this can feel like a norm. You are pretty. Believe it. You are competent. Believe it. People love you for you. They're not going to disappear when they figure you out. Believe it. The you that you think they're going to figure out is the absolute treasure of who you are. And when they figure it out, they're going to stay if they're the right people. Welcome them. Open yourself up to being in healthy, nurturing, 
positive, rewarding, brilliant spaces without sabotaging them to preempt the threat that you believe is going to come. Don't play the get them before they get you trick. Sit still, enjoy it. If they come for you, you've done this before. Chances are they won't. Open yourself up to the chance that the love is here and it's going to stay. Open yourself up to the fact that you're good at the job, that's why they hired you. That the idea of opening this company was birthed by you, so you're creative, you can innovate things from scratch. Believe it, it's here. Your company exists, it's registered, it's getting somewhere. Bask in it. You did that. It's here, it's believable. But most importantly, enjoy it. Because you're worth it and unlearn day by day to soften the voices that suggest that you're not. That's the trauma. That's the stuff that came from outside. And our businesses in this house is starting to assign back the boxes to where they belong so you can come back to your innocence. So the first person that called you ugly, Simniki Boxiak, take it, take it, bully, take it, that belongs to you. That was never my stuff. I was innocent and excited about life until you called me ugly. Take it. And then you see the self-esteem is getting better. Then the first teacher that was entirely impressed with your test and made you feel stupid. We take teacher's box. We're like, Mrs. So-and-so, I never thought I was dumb until you humiliated me in front of the class and everybody laughed. You take your box. You go to the first person that left you and you're like, I believed in love before you took me to a bridge of depth and you abandoned me there. That was you, not me. You take your box of the fact that you didn't treat me with courtesy and you take it and you see, once you've assigned the box of maladaptive qualities back to where they belong, you get to see I wasn't as malfunctioning as I thought. It was the people that life brought my way when I wasn't wise enough to notice dysfunction and send them packing. And then you are left with that core of curiosity instead of anxiety. When you're just curious, how is it going to pan out? Where is this adventure taking me? You're like, last time it took me somewhere, I was injured. But that's anxiety. That was that experience. And you assign and package. Assign and package. Ta -ta -taps, ta -ta 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 -taps. You called me this and that. Makazi, this one's yours. You called me lazy. This is why I keep thinking I can't even make a decent meal because I'm good at some things. Maybe I'm not domesticated, but you made me think I'm lazy. Sit in your couch and remember where the voices came from and post them back. And believe this core, good, authentic, this longing that you have for better is confirmation that you believe Better is there for you. This longing that this isn't it, this can't be it for me, means you know there's a better that you deserve. And don't stop until you find it. And when you get there, don't ruin it because it's terrifying. Sit and think, I'm going to learn the language of love. I'm going to learn the language of goodness. I'm going to learn the language of self-belief. I'm going to trust myself and I'm going to trust the world. I'm going to trust that people are good. They want to do good by me. I'm going to trust my wisdom that should I find out that I was wrong in my judgment about them, I'll walk away. Think of all the relationships you've left and trust that you know the difference between healthy and unhealthy love. Don't look at this list and think, You've been screwed over so many times. Do you even know the difference? No, reply to that voice and say, the fact that I left is a clear enough indication that eventually I learned the difference. So yes, I know the difference. And if I'm giving it a chance, it's because I've got no proof not to. And when that proof brings itself to light, I'm going to do the thing that I did last time. We, we are being a rebuttal to the voices, the gremlins. 
they very mean. The ones that you think of when you are resting against the pillow, we're fighting against that stuff. Record it. Record yourself, record me, whatever. But when you start to forget, go back to thinking, I'm learning. I'm learning to trust when he doesn't pick up his phone that he's not cheating on me. I'm learning to trust that when my boss gives me feedback, it's not personal. I'm learning to trust that if a client complains, they're not ridiculing me. I'm learning. You don't know your way around here, but you're going to learn. You're going to learn. And I wish you all the best in your adventure of engaging with the world from a place of believing that I deserve to be here. That's why I am. And I'm going to take my space up in the world. Wait, I must tell Miss Universe, guys. Wait, I must tell. Take up space and cement yourself. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. I listened to, I can't remember what it was titled, but it was from Bumile Dwala's channel. Um, she said a bunch of things, but that one line stood out for me. And she said, focus on the grace of today. That's the one. We get so lost in wanting to dodge bullets that may come in the future and failures that we may encounter that you skip that today is okay though. That's, I don't know if that's what she meant, but that's the lesson that I took from it to focus on the grace of today. You guys can go watch that um, on her channel. It's, it's in one of the recent things that she's put out. I thought that was brilliant. It did something to my heart when I heard focus on the grace of today. Today is good. Do today. And don't create dysfunction because you used to cleaning up. Now you're leaving tabs open because you're good at mopping. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. You okay is the name of the channel. And you okay is the message we will issue to you every chance we get. There's nothing wrong with you. You okay. It's okay to be okay. When we talk about painful things, it's so we can trace back at what stage you stopped believing that you're okay. But the core message is that there is nothing wrong with you. And I want to sit here as often as my time allows until you learn it for yourself that you're okay. I believe it. And I hope I speak often enough to summon a voice inside of you that also believes it. See you next week.